Okay, a uh, couple things. One, there uh, will be with a, uh, if you are interested in this crash course, a uh, video about uh, buffers, so it can help you if you want to get a review on just the things that we're doing. Uh, but um, what you have in front of you, the chapter four, it says reactions, and then there's two other pages, or there's two other pages, and then it says chapter five and chapter six. This is a mini beginning of our review for our AP exam on May 2nd. Okay? This is what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you, over spring break, to try, to try one of each chapter. Just one. There's two of each. Okay? I want you to try to start in the open area a little bit. Like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? AP Bio is doing three chapters worth of work right now in, for the summer. They have to learn all about the endocrine <coughs> system on their own because they are out of time. With spring break and then the timing and everything else, we have about two and a half to three weeks of review. And if we can just even start to see a little bit of this, it'll help. So I'm going to check, have you attempted one of each chapter when we come back? That, that's all I'm asking you to do. It's not that much time. Oh, I'm going somewhere. Well, you can, I think that this will fit on the carry-on or whatever. You, you can try it. Uh, this is the beginning of, the, of all the, the work, so it shouldn't be as... Um, Overwhelming. I understand that thermochem might be a little um, daunting, just because it always is. Uh, but I just suggestion of the two for chapter four, I would do the first one. The second one is confusing. Uh, when we do it, you'll be like, oh my gosh. But it is a little confusing in how that looks. So um, I, I, I'm asking you to start getting that ideas, those ideas in. And I will just say this, why I'm handing this out early is that chapters four and five so chapter four is all about just calculations and stoichiometry and things, and chapter five is about gases. That kind of is laced within all sorts of other problems. I mean, two equilibrium tests ago, we had a PV equals NRT just thrown in there immediately. And it's like, oh, I can handle PV equals NRT. Well, it's about recognizing it and really being comfortable and, and working in different kinds of ways, okay? So um, one from each chapter, I'd like you to try. You do it in the open area. You do not write underneath. You, you give it structure because on the test, that's how they do it. They, they have the problem, and then you have to do it from below without writing in there. And I've been asking you to do that in your packets, by the way. You don't pack it into the little area. You, you write it from scratch. You, you create and uh, you give yourself structure on your problems. Okay, so today what we're going to be doing is graphing a little bit and figuring out how we can figure out uh, different kinds of things like unknowns, uh, information from curves. So if you can have your titration simulation, have a calculator ready to go, but you won't need it right away. Um, so we're going to start at the top. We're going to be kind of doing this together. Sometimes we'll pause and come out of it, and other times we uh, will just uh, be right in the moment with that. So uh, here we go. So the first one, just kind of listen. In a titration the experiment, a solution of accurately known concentration, called a standard solution, is gradually added to another solution of unknown concentration until the chemical reaction between the two solutions is complete. Let's consider the titration of an unknown concentration of a hydrochloric acid, HCl, solution with 0 0.20 molar sodium hydroxide, NaOH. Click on the button to begin the titration. Woo! All right. Uh, so here's, you got to be able to explain what's happening. So it's really important as we do this, I want you to kind of notice what's all happening here. So right now all I have is uh, H pluses and Cl minuses because that's what's inside my, is this? What is this? Which one, actually, I should ask this. Is that the analyte in the burette, or is the analyte in the Erlenmeyer? Erlenmeyer. The Erlenmeyer, because I'm analyzing that. I always, you always know the concentration in your burette. You always know the concentration in your, in your burette. You never, if you don't, you wouldn't know it here. Now, sometimes we know it, um, but this time we don't. We always know a volume, though. It's really important to have a volume. So what we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be following along. Uh, on the sheet of, uh, this is the first half of the first page. So we're doing a strong, strong. So please write down the initial amount of HCl, that's there. The concentration of NaOH, that's there. And then that's about all we can write at the moment. And then we're going to try to graph. Get the, the points as close as you possibly can, okay? It, it's, it's not vital that it's exact. So here we go, I'm going to begin the titration. Choose to add NaOH to HCl in 5.00 milliliter increments. Make sure to notice the change in pH and the reaction on a molecular scale. 
Note that hydrogen ions, H+, plus, from the acid, combine with hydroxide ions, OH-, minus, from the base, to produce water. Also note that as H+, plus is removed from solution, the pH of the solution increases. Click to add more sodium hydroxide. To be honest, I expect that this one you, you will understand quite well. It's, it's the weak ones that are going to be a little trickier, but I think it's nice to just kind of go through this one last time. Uh, to be able to understand. So that was 1.11. That's great. Okay, we're going to add another 5. Uh, and again, you just have to be kind of close. So it, it, it's going to tell you, and then it's going to disappear. So you don't have to actually write them all down if you don't want to. If you want to, that's fine. We're doing them by fives. And you can connect the lines later if you like, or you can connect them right away. I kind of like drawing it all in one foul swoop. I'm going to add another one. I don't want to spend too much time on all this. And then again, the, the pH, that's what the pH is reading. So it's on the pH meter, and it's on on the graph uh, right there. So I'm up to 15 mils of NaOH. Notice what's starting to happen is that I'm gaining more and more water, right? What else is in here? Na, but that's just going to stay as uh, ions. So those are spectator ions. So what's being consumed in this? The H pluses, not the CLs. The H plus, right? The, the OH is consuming the H plus and making uh, H2O. We continue. All right, now, what, let me ask you this. How could I figure out the amount, this is your next question, the amount of NaOH added when the equivalence point is reached? How could I figure that out without doing the simulation? This is something we have to, Jeffrey. Well, if you have the initial pH, then you can just find the concentration of H plus. <laughs> and that would find my equivalence point? Well, then you can find out the amount of NaOH amount OH needed to cancel it out. Okay, so then you need, basically you're saying you need, instead of maybe pH, you need moles of OH plus equaling your moles of your OH minus? Sure. Okay, well how do we find moles equaling moles? What is that? M1, B1 equals M2, B2. What I, what I would suggest, because you're just, uh, you're going to hand this in, but you're going to get it back. I, I'd write about the equivalence point, just write like MABA equals MBBB. That's how you could figure this out without doing this uh, titrate uh, the simulation. Like on a test, I could say, hey, what, how much volume did I need to add to reach the equivalence point? I want to ask, what's the equivalence point pH? Strong, strong, it's going to be 7. That's not a good question any longer. But how much would it take? MABA equals MBBB. I can figure that out right now. I got my M, I got my VA, I got my B, uh, MB, and when it's all, uh, oh, sorry, and it, well, and then I would be able to, when I'm done, I could drop out all the amount. I could figure out the, um, the V, uh, the VA, VV, VB, the volume, um, once I get there. So that, that's the calculation that we're going to have to use. But you're going to see it visually here, so it doesn't help uh, as much. Well, 1.93, we're getting close. The reason why I know we're getting close is that I'm running out of H pluses. There aren't many left. I only see two left. So we're at 25. <coughs> And check this out. At this point in the titration, the acid has completely reacted with or been neutralized by the base. This point is called the equivalence point. In the titration of a strong acid with a strong base, the pH at the equivalence point is 7. Note that only sodium ions and chloride ions are present in solution. Because these ions will not affect the pH of the solution, the pH is neutral. Click to add more sodium hydroxide. So what's the answer? The amount added? It's 30. Now, I, I should say, like that, that's how you're going to get your molarity of your unknown. I should have clarified that more. Just when we're talking about equivalence points, so that is an equation that needs to be utilized and understood that that's where it's going to be uh, used. Uh, well, we'll talk about the, well. Let's talk about the reaction right now. Uh, the reaction technically is HCl plus NaOH. I just want you to understand the difference between these two. We wrote this down once before, but HCl plus NaOH, and then that's a double replacement, right? So then you have H2O and um, NaCl. So then it says net ionic equation. We've been writing this a lot. What's the net ionic? It's not going to show up. So actually, it might after. H plus plus OH minus equals water, right? The other ones are all spectators. So it's H plus plus OH minus equals water. As you're writing that, I'm going to finish the titration. 
Now it should make sense afterwards, and please look at the ions as we're doing this, that we're going to have excess OH minus now. And it should just shoot really fast. Click to add one final increment of sodium hydroxide. So that's just above 12. And I try to give you a grid so it's easier to use. And then last one. And then it should level out a little. And you'll know now, now. Now let's calculate the molar concentration of the HCl solution. So I wanted to from the amount of base to added to reach the equivalence point, you can calculate moles of base. I, went too quick the reaction is hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide producing water and sodium chloride. Or the net ionic equation is hydrogen ions plus hydroxide ions producing water. From the mole ratio in the reaction above, you can calculate moles of HCl. Click on the correct concentration of the HCl solution. So exciting. So that should be on the bottom there. That should be an answer for you. Uh, molarity of HCl. And I should say show work. I, I got it. I got ahead of myself. I was excited. I, I just I should we were gonna do it there, but I got too excited. Hunter, which one should I click? You have it? No, I don't got it, but I can guess. Um let's go. <laughs> oh my gosh, you that one. You're literally closing your eyes now. Point four. <laughs> Layla, what do we, which one? Point zero five? No. Point four. Yay! That's point one. Yeah. On the bottom, yeah, that's, how, that's how you should do it. On the bottom, that's, you're doing the M, B, M, A, B, A, then B, B, B. So it's point one. Put the point 0.2 of the molarity times uh, the 30 mils equals 60 mils of HCl times the molarity of acid, and you should get your molarity. So this is a classic uh, strong, strong. Uh, if you want to emphasize the 7, okay, we're going to be looking at some different uh, curves today. That, that was where the equivalence point is. If I see the equivalence point, it's always right in the middle, by the way. When this jumps up, when this jumps up, basically the increase, the exact middle of that is the equivalence point. That's where it equals moles of H plus and OH minus. So what you could do is MAVA equals MBVB. So I know the uh, VA is 60. And then on the other side, the um, MB was, no, the molarity was a 0 0.2. 0 0.2 M times 30 milliliters. And then you multiply and divide, and you'll get the 0.1 molar of acid. Or you should. Okay. So those are strongs. Strongs uh, have not nearly as much work uh, involved in it. Now, you're like, well, we didn't calculate anything. Yeah, I'm, I'm interpreting a graph. I'm interpreting some information. All right. But there are other things to do. So this bottom part, we're going to do this really sloppy. So we're going to draw this together. I'm going to show you why it's so important uh, to do it in another way. So we're going to find the concentration of an acetic acid. We're going to write on this a little bit. So uh, you don't have a lot of work to do on this first one. So here we go. i got to adjust a couple things. So I'm going to add 5 mils at a time like this last one. And what we're going to do is we're going to eventually turn in. We're going to, you're going to help me figure this out. And I'm going to put in the answer. And then I'm going to hit turn in lab report to see if we're right. But not in this first run. We'll do it in the next one. Um, so uh, here we go. What we're going to do, again, doesn't matter if it's perfect. Please understand that. Uh, we're going to start. So um, notice I'm going to do it five at a time. So if you want to just put dots or lines, it doesn't really matter. So right away, it went from about 3.6 to about 4.5. Again, it should be stopping at the five. I don't know why. What I've decided is I'm going to use, I'm dropping 0.5 molar. NaOH into vinegar, into acetic acid, okay? But I'm doing it five mils at a time. So literally I have this point, and now I have that point. 
Okay, so just make, you can make a straight line. This is supposed to look uh, kind of choppy. Um, I'm gonna add another five. Okay, so now it's just above, just above five, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Just try to make this a little bit, please. So we can get to the, the real one here. Whoa, whoa! So then at 15, it's just above 12. Okay, it's every five, so that should make that a lot easier. You're not curving it, you're drawing it exactly the way that I have it here. And then it's just under 13. And then it's at 13. And then you'll notice it basically stays, I mean, I don't know how far you need to go, but you can just make like a straight line. It just slowly creeps above 13. Okay. Couple things I want you to do though. And it says it right there. Um, I said, on the right side, it says label the buffer region and the equivalence point. Okay, every time I want us to do this. So we're gonna make a little box. Now it's harder to see it. A buffer region is where there's a resistance in pH. Okay, so you can make, unfortunately it's really hard to see and it's, it's bad. Just put a little box right about here because it, it tried to level out, but it, we, we, did too, we did this too quickly to be able to get a nice curve. Okay, where do you think the equivalence point is? Approximately. What you could do, again, this is tough, I would take it from here to here and, and cut it in half. Equivalence point is, you gotta cut that in half, so yeah, probably at the 12 and a half. So wherever 12 and a half is, go straight up. Is that about eight-ish? Does that look about eight? But wherever it is, for you, put a little dot and then just put like EQPT, like equivalence point. Okay, so right there, it's clearly a, this is an example, it's not a good graph, but it's an example of a strong base with a weak acid. And the reason why is the equivalence point is in the basic region, okay? It also doesn't lie flat, goes up, lies flat. Let's do this again now. So, once you're done with that, that's all I wanted for that one. Flip the page, we're gonna do this again in a nicer way. Now, this could have been any concentration. So whatever we're doing right now, this is unique in this moment in time. Um, so I'm gonna do 0.5 again, but now I'm gonna do it by 0.2. What I'd like you to do is maybe just watch and not worry about graphing it until it's done, personally. I think it's, it's something just to, to watch as we go. So I'm gonna do the exact same titration, but instead of it jumping so far, and we'll, we'll, we'll fill this all in later, this is by 0.2. So right there, that was all of the, the data that we didn't get. When I hit click the first time, it went from here and it shot up to there. So we see this really nice curve, and we'll talk about what's happening to that curve in a minute. Okay, then we just keep going for a second here. I'm just gonna hold it down, but that doesn't go as fast. And what we'll do is we'll just find some, oh, now check that, oh shoot, I wish I could go backwards. It always will shoot up at a certain point, and whoa, boom! It's the moment that there's, it, it's, it's equal, or that we run out of our H plus, or we have just a little bit too much OH, it will shoot up and you will have a drastic change. So obviously there's no more buffering at all. Uh, now we only have OH. And then why it levels out is that it, it's basically maxed out. And this should be surprised where this is gonna go. I just, come on, I can do it. That's good enough. All right, so what I would suggest, kind of mirror, like, this is the goal, is to try to get a nice smooth curve. So some ideas. You want to run through 5 and 10, 5 pH and 10 mils. See that? Like, I'm just looking at some points here. Um, 5 is in the middle, like at 4.3-ish. But do a nice little curve. Try to come out of it, intercept 15 and 12. See that one? Like, maybe just put those points down. Like a little dot, like try to intercept that. Because I just want us to more accurately label this. You, and we're going to do a couple extra things with this one. Because now we have to calculate this. We're going to use this graph, obviously, than the other one because this gives us a lot more data. Uh, as I said, last one, I want the same thing. 
the buffer region. Now, there's certain buffer regions that are better than others. Um, I use a pretty concentrated amount of uh, base compared to some, like sometimes you only do 0.1 is the 0.5. So again, the buffer region is when it starts to level out and then before it starts to increase again. So right about here to here, I'd make a box. Try to be accurate, like before it starts to slope. Before, I mean, sorry, before it starts to increase or decrease its, so here when it starts to decrease its slope and here before it starts to increase its slope, that's called the buffer region. And the more accurate you are with this, I'll, we'll talk about one thing that we can do with it. Secondly, now try to label, maybe, maybe it's the same for you, try to label the equivalence point. So where does it start to increase the, the, the straight up uh, shot and then before it starts to come out of its um, climb, the exact middle of that area is considered the equivalence point. Try to put a dot on that. And then you can see if you're, you're accurate on that or not. But we're, we're going to try to calculate this then. What is the concentration of the acid uh, in the solution? Okay, so I, I want to talk about how we would do that. Um, before we go on from that though, what I would like you to do, right in the middle, I'd like you to put a dot right in the middle of your box and make a label coming off the other way. What is that middle of that area? We, we wrote it down right before we uh, walked out yesterday, or at least I, we try, I try to get to it in every hour. That's the PKA, which is the perfect buffer. But that's the PKA. Well, what does that mean? Well, you could figure that out, and I'd like to do that right now first, and then see if we're accurate. Maybe the graph is wrong. This is acetic acid, so acetic acid is the famous 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. So pKa equals negative log of Ka. So what that means, if you take negative log of 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, and if you're asking where are you getting that, that's the K for acetic acid. What do you get for this? And we should have a calculator. We're going to do some calculations. So I want to know what that means. I want you to understand what this number actually does for us. 4.74. What is that? On our graph, what does that mean then? That is also the pH. pKa equals pH at that point. Does that line up in your box? Or, I mean, are you close? I hope you're kind of close. Like, I mean, it may not be exactly perfect, but what I'm trying to tell you is that spot of 4.74 is the exact middle of where the buffer region actually exists. Okay? That's exactly where you've converted half of your acid, right here, half of your acid to base. It's also, you might want to label this as well, that's Sometimes people call it the half equivalence point. Why? Because if you've, ha if you've converted half of your base, I mean, sorry, your acid to base, your, the other half of it is at the equivalence point. You're halfway there. You're halfway there. So you can identify an acid by finding out the, this spot right here. Oh, wait, what's that middle one? Oh, the pH is 4.74. Oh, I'll take 10 to the negative 4.74. And oh my gosh, I did this in a lab. I can find a Ka value. I can get that from a graph. So I find it on that middle buffer region. And I can figure out a weak acid or a weak base by taking the middle spot of that buffer region. So um, how are we going to do this? How are we going to calculate? So what I'd like you to do, if you want to work with someone else or by yourself, I want to know the concentration of this acid. What is the concentration of the acid? I'll give you a hint. It, 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 deals, it, it could deal with uh, the pKa, but it's probably more dealing with um, where the equivalence point is. You're going to have to make somewhat of an estimation. Okay? So, at least brainstorm for a second or think about it. Maybe you're like, I don't know where to start. I'm going to give you about two minutes to just kind of see if you understand where to go with this. Yeah, 
If you're having problems with this, remember this is the equation. That's the equation that we're using. Give you an extra, like all this stuff is here. Check it out, I'm using 0.5 molar of that, right? I'm using 0.5 molar of that. Um, I know volumes, and now I'm not, I'm not saying the equation is necessarily needed, but you need to think about what's happening here, because then eventually we got to get to pH, okay? So, maybe the first goal is to figure out something about that equivalence point, and then we go from there, okay? So, just I'm letting you think for a second more. We'll, we'll get into it, but just, do you feel like you have enough information, or what are you missing? Maybe that's just as important. Yeah, I don't know, because I don't know this, or I don't know that. Yeah. Try, to, try to just think about it for a second. You just have some hard, you have some hard, you have some hard, you have some hard, you have some hard, This is the difference. We're just, we already have a graph. If I ask what's the pH at the equivalence point, what you have to do is figure out how much concentration of H plus or OH minus is left. And then you have to plug it in a negative log and all that. We already can see it. All I want to know is what's the concentration. Okay, so I'm kind of letting conversations go out because there's been some good uh, debates, but what do we know? We know, we know the, uh, the volume of the acid, right? We know the concentration of the base. At the equivalence point, do I know the concentration of my base? Approximately? Like, I can guess, is that like 14, let's say? I don't know, 13 and a half, 14. So what am I missing? Can I do M1, V1 equals M2, V2 here? Equivalence point, if you have three of the four, you can do M1, V1 equals M2, V2 still. Mm -hmm. Because at that moment, you have equal amounts of acid and base. The base has caused it to drive all the way to the other side. So it's almost like the weak base is acting like a, I mean, sorry, the weak acid is acting like a strong acid because it's going across with the, the OH. It's driving it with it. Okay. So if you're like, well, why didn't you just say that right away? I wanted to see where we're all heading. It's interesting. I already heard, heard something that I never thought of before with the pH. Um, so. We plug it in. I don't know this. The volume has been stated, 25 mils. Now this is going to be somewhat of an estimation. Uh, the molarity of my uh, base is 0.5 molar, and the volume is an estimation. What do we want to go with, 14, 13 and a half? Uh, 
Yeah. Well, you can, but you'd still have to make an estimation of what you think it is. I hear what you're saying now. Oh, it's on freeze. I don't know. Maybe it's in between. Like 13.7? Because look at 13.8 is 10. 13.6 is 6. It's clearly the middle of that's in between those. Right? So I'm going to say 13.7. Just to be a little more accurate. Obviously, you would have to have data for that. Help me out. I don't have my calculator available. What's your 0.274? Your 0.274? 0.274? Yeah. Now, I don't know what this is. The reason like, why don't you know is it's, it's a new unknown every single time. It's really funny. Sometimes I do this, and this thing takes forever. It goes way over here, and then it shoots up. And I've seen one where it literally does this, and then it goes, and it's like, <laughs> label the buffer region. Like, I can't see it. It does not exist. Um, because the concentration would be higher if it's a longer buffer region. If it's smaller, it's a, it's a smaller uh, concentration because it can't resist the change as much. Okay, so I'm a little nervous, but we're going to find out. Whoa, panicked. I did. I'm going to ask you to turn your key, and then I didn't. Yeah. Oh, All right. Oh, that was worth it. A jumping star, sun. <laughs> what success? It blinks. Yay! All right. So now we're gonna do something different. My God, it doesn't matter, but it's alive. But that's not the only thing we can do. So, um, I don't know how to get some here. <laughs> So we're going to do this really quick, and then we'll do one more of a different kind. So this is similar, but now this is a hypothetical. What I'm going to do is assign decay. Okay, so I have assigned a hypothetical acid. I think I have everything that I wrote on there. I could have done anything I wanted, okay? But um, I don't know the concentration of it. And right, I, I don't know just as much as you. So we're going to just repeat this one more time. And then the last exercise is, is very different, uh, which what we can do. And that's like the, the coup de grace of it all. So what I'd like you to do, first off, right away, where's the, uh, I'd like you to put a point where the pKa, well, wait, I guess you don't know the volume. Fine, I'd like you to know what pH you're expecting it to be, though. So right now, please figure out the pKa. Just where is it going to be? You don't know the volume, but what you could do is you have it on the right, and then you just move it over until it hits our line. And then that's exactly where the pKa, that's going to be the middle of our buffer region. So if you're like, I don't know what I'm doing. pKa is negative log of my Ka. So do that, so, so you know. You make a little dash on the side of the table. But you can do wherever, I'm just making this up. Let's say my pKa is 2.5. I can make a little dash right here waiting for it. You're like, well, wait, why can't I put it out here? I don't know where it's going to be yet. I'd have to do more calculations. Well, I know the graph's going to be made. So it's an important thing. Like, okay, well, I'm going to go across. Oh, it hits the line right there. Sweet. That's the middle of my buffer region. Is that for like milliliters per NOH is what you're solving? Yeah, well, yeah, you won't know yet until we go. So here we go. I'm going to start graphing it again. Let's just wait and see. If this is a really bad one, I'm going to have to do it again. And what I mean by that, if it's a really, it shoots right away. That's what it says. Yep. Uh, yeah. God damn it. <laughs> We're doing it again. We found the buffer region. Don't do it. Uh, no buffer region. Let's try it again. Thank you. Ready? Ready? There it goes. Yeah, 
using the same strength of an acid, but because of it has a large concentration, it can resist that pH change. We're going to do this one last time, though, because that would have been a horrible one to draw, and we'll go with whatever we have. Are you sure? Yeah, no, I'm not. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> we have to run with it, you said. Oh. Okay, you know what? It's an easier one to grab for you. There you go. Yeah. You know what? The line goes straight up on the five, but you can go with it. I like that. <laughs> That's lame. Uh, I should have kept the first, the, or the second one was the best, by far. Uh, you know what, you got to go with what you get sometimes, so that's what we have. Yes? Okay, so does that pKa match up though? Or not? What did we determine it was going to be? 2.4? 2 .4? So, ah, this is lame. <laughs> So it would be right about there. So we have a very small buffer region. Yeah. It's okay, though. Because that's not what matters in this one. The next one's going to matter. Because uh, we're going to use that to help us figure something out. So this one I could not take the next time. So what we need to do, I'll help you out if you want to get a more accurate value. Um, anybody want to just take a shot or a guess of the volume? So we can go, I mean, the pH at the uh, equivalence point. So check out the data. At <laughs> horrible data. At 4.8, it's 3.87. At 5.0, it's 11.3. That's that is an example of how fast it changes. There's, it's very delicate right there. So my guess would be 4.9. I mean, that's the only thing I can say. I don't know if anyone wants to argue that, but just I mean, it obviously can't be 4.8 or 5.0. So 4.9 is probably in the middle somewhere uh, for your volume. And again, this, all I'm trying to reemphasize is that when you have all this other information, it's as simple as doing moles equals moles. It's all that is. Because we're not doing pH. pH problems, the calculation of pH is a lot more complicated. We'll try to fit something in there yet. Yeah. That's what uh, Kyler's question was too. Well, what do you get with that if you do that? What, what, what pH do you get? Yeah, so that, that won't work. Only because it's, it's so acidic, right? So let me reiterate that then. I think the last problem, it was just a nice coincidence. It's the half equivalence point because half of the acid has been converted. It's not the half equivalence point because the pH is half of the equivalence point. It's half of it being converted. When it's the equivalence point, all the acid has been converted. And it's been consumed, I should say. Okay? So there's a big difference there. All right, anybody want to take a shot? Anybody have an answer for me? 0.098. 0.098? Yeah. Now, that does not surprise me if this is right because of a really small concentration because the thing couldn't hold any, like it, it shot up really fast. I mean, compared to the last one that was way over here, I would actually like to know what that was. Um, so let's find out or else we'll, we'll uh, write to uh, Yi, Yi, Yi Ling Wang. Yay. Blinking starfish. Interesting. It was a happy 
I need help with space. Okay, so we're going to flip the page and we're going to do this one. Now, this one's very different, so I want you to understand. And we'll go into this one and then we'll be done with this. And then we're going to try to get to a calculation or maybe some questions on uh, lesson 21. Uh, you, you might have that. So, last thing here. We're going to sign. Again, don't draw this right away because I don't know if it's going to be good or not. I want to know the Ka. So you don't know the Ka value. That's all this is saying. It was good. Now I don't know. I think we got another one. I think we got the big one. I don't know. Oh, it's done. We got it done. Hello. I'm going to go with that. Can y'all sketch it? Nice one. So, I'm going to go with it. So what I would kind of stress maybe is that you could probably intercept between seven and a half to three. Maybe make a little point there. Okay, seven and a half to three. It starts a little bit below two. Um, I, I see this. It intercepts at four and twenty-five. If you want to make a little dot there, four and twenty-five. It's nice to see. Um, it comes out. Make a little dot quickly here. Just twelve and thirty-five. That's where it comes out of the of the climb. Right? And it starts through the climb at 5 and 32 and a half. Okay, I'm just giving you some ideas because you want this as accurate as possible. Find spots first before you just start drawing the line. Put a couple dots so you know where you're going to go. Very important. It starts up a little bit. reason why is that you have only acid and you're adding the base. So then it's, it, there's nothing to resist the pH change. And then as it's starting to uh, convert the acid to the conjugate base, that's when it can level out because you're creating more and more buffer. It's getting a better buffer and then it's becoming a weaker buffer until there's nothing to stop the pH change. So, all this question is asking you is, what is the pKa? So the pKa is a, uh, is a pH reading. Right now, we could do, you could do this in a lot more difficult way where you could determine the uh, concentrations and you could plug it into a K expression and then find the K value and take negative log of that, or we can read the table and we try to figure out where the, the pKa is. Okay, so it's gonna, you're going to have to try to estimate that as much as possible, um, but that's where that is. Now, why is that important and why am I making us do this? Again, this could help us identify acids or bases. If it was a, a base, you could do the same thing. It would be a K, pKb. But wherever I think that is, if I take 10 to the negative, I would just like you to write this somewhere next to it. 10 to the negative pKa would equal my Ka. Like if I ever would need that, okay? What? At 15? Uh, 3.52. Yeah, there's a couple. If you want any other data points. I guess show of work, there isn't really much to show. Uh, and then I just want to point out one other little thing, and then uh, I know a lot of people have had some questions on Lesson 21. I'm right where, I'm about five minutes behind where I want to be, but um, anybody? What, what did we come up with? And this wasn't meant to be over Well, not KA, just PKA. 3.52, anybody? Something close? 3.52. I don't know what their room of error is, so please blinking star. So if we say 3.52, we're saying it's somewhere right about here? Yeah. Or so. Let's find out. So, again, as much as if you want to look at, well, that's simple. That can give us a lot of information. I'm amazed when I also do this and be like, identify the acid. You're like, how am I supposed to identify that acid? You identify it through K values. So, please take a look at your sheet. Uh, you will be required to do some of these other final things on here. I wanted to show you uh, one question, though, on here. And then the rest of it is for your discussion. Here are three different curves. Okay? I want you to notice them all. Here it says, three unknown acids are studied by titration with sodium hydroxide. So these are all acids again. By the way, what, what am I dropping into this solution? 
like in general. Like this one I'm dropping, well, I was going to give it away then. It's the opposite. So I'm dropping uh, an acid into a, a base. Um, we always drop a strong into something. Just I've never dropped a, you don't drop weeks into, it's always strong acid or strong base. So you have uh, vitamin C, uh, you have aspirin, and you have vinegar, okay? And it tells you the pKa's. So you should actually be able to figure it out just by that. Now, why do I know? Why would I know that all three of these are weak acids versus not strong, strong, or a strong acid to a weak base? What's the one thing that tells me about that? There's a specific part of the curve. Okay. Not the, the beginning tells me if it's a weak, but it could be like, I mean, it could be a, Shoot, I guess it would be the other direction then. Um, I'm, not, I'm not giving this the right answer here. Where would the equivalence point be if it was a strong acid with a weak base? Be where? Above seven. If it was a weak uh, base with a strong acid, it's below seven. Okay? And then a strong, strong is seven. Reason why, let me just point this one out. This was HCl with a weak base. Check out where the equivalence point is. You take half of it, it's below seven. That is the single biggest indicator though of you being able to immediately say if you ever, like what's the reasoning? Well the equivalence point is lower than, is below seven pH or above seven pH or is, is exactly at seven. That's how we can identify those kinds of things, okay? So I give you a bunch of options. Uh, what you do is what we just did before. I'm not going to go through it more than that, but it tells you the pKa already, so I'm kind of giving you a, a way out of that. So uh, you'll want to be able to do some of that. Uh, lastly, and we'll, we'll cover this next week a little bit, uh, you have uh, a question here, but then uh, at what point in the titration of arsenic acid with base would one expect to find a mixture of primarily H2ASO4 and a lesser amount of AHO4? Uh, two minus. Can you just please write to the side here and actually if you want to circle this, this is my last little part and I know we, we're going in deeper than I'd like to. Put a little line here and make a, uh, a line here and, and write triprotic. Please do that. Please write tri here. I will write this with you because this is important. I want you to see. Now, triprotics and diprotics are not nearly as clear. But if I ever ask you, you should be able to identify it. Sure, I'm not going to be able to do the whole thing. It's too high. Shoot. The reason why? It, most acids look like this. And, or it will be like that. But right here, see how there's a, a plateau, a plateau, and then this is the problem. I don't know if it's done or not, but I for surely see two. Uh, I don't know how far they went, but every time it levels out, what it's saying, it, it's showing when another H was stripped off. Because it plateaus and then creates more of the um, uh, conjugate base, and then it starts to climb again, and then it starts to create the next conjugate base, and each one will be a little less shallow, or a little more shallow, and, and not as good of a buffer. Usually what you'll see is like a diprotic, where a diprotic will look something like this, it'll start up, and then, it, I know it looks a lot, a lot like that, but it'll kind of climb and then level off, and there's your first, and there's your second. So then you actually have two equivalence points. Um, and and we, we don't really study it all that much, but you need to be able to identify it. And we'll, we'll look at it more. Again, right now this whole week was about getting used to curves, doing the calculations. Um, I want to talk quickly about, um, Erica, because I had a lot of questions. What was that question on Lesson 21? Was it an exercise or a problem? I can't remember. Um, Do you remember what it was? Exercise three. Six? Exercise three. Uh, lesson 21, exercise three. And if you've done it already, great. Um, tell you now, if we have a snow day tomorrow, then the stuff isn't due until you come back, but then it's due right away. If we don't, it's due. Okay? If you're not here and that wasn't planned, I have, I have issues with, oh, I'm not coming now because it, it's due. 
So you're going to have to get it to me somehow. Um, but if we have it, then that's great. Reminder also, it's uh, end of the quarter tomorrow. End of the quarter tomorrow. Extra credit reports, all late work, anything is due tomorrow, regardless of snow day. For that, like any late work, extra credit, oh, I have my report. You can email it to me by 11.59 tomorrow night or anything like that. But you've had nine weeks to do some of those things. So hopefully you've taken care of business for that. One day does not excuse that, okay? But, um, Erica, can you help me with that? Um, do you have that in front of you by chance? I, I, I forgot to bring my sheet. What's the acid? Uh, Say it, I'm sorry, one more time. I, like that? Yeah. Okay, so I've had about seven people come in for this kind of a problem. And what it says is, hey, I have a certain amount of, of acid here and, and I have a certain amount of salt. I'm totally trying to remember. Are, are these the values? I, Okay, and people coming out, hey, this is what I want to do. That is correct if I ask, what is the pH of this solution? But the problem says this. What would happen if I add 0.1 moles, which it's in one liter, so I can say molar, of NaOH? What's the pH of adding this to that? And this is the chapter. This is what this chapter is about. So would you have to realize, hey, I'm adding a base to an acid. So an acid-base problem always reacts together, but you have to realize that I'm adding an ac a strong base to an acid, so it's a single line, and then I make this. What I need you to keep realizing is that I have my major players. They're both still in here. Right? They're both in the equation. And I've really appreciated the number of you that have started this quite early uh, in the beginning. Um, but now we're here, like do you have it or not? And then I have 0.1. So now what have we been learning? This all links to the titration. Okay? You consume the acid because there's less of it. You gain it on this side, right? So now I have 0.3, I have 0, I have 0.2. Now even your packet says, okay, now plug it into the K expression and go. But I have amounts of an acid and a conjugate base pair, Henderson Hasselbach that thing and be done, okay? It, it's so much smoother and uh, it's one step. But you got to recognize the equation and Erica voiced exactly, oh, okay, see ya. The uh, expression that most of you I'm trying to get across is the equation's the most important thing. So I guess it's time. So, all right, we got to go. I didn't know we had bells. So. Is it POH? Uh, no, it's you can deal with this, so it, it can be an acid now because the OH is gone. Okay. When we finish the OH? Um, if you have a KB. Yes, that's a good question. Oh, uh, you'll hand it in after break. Okay. I'd like you to answer those questions.